Hello and welcome to Faber Book Time. Um, and also welcome to my house. Here we are. This is my writing chair. Um, so, my name's Chloe Dakin and I write books and sometimes I write plays. And um, really I like experimenting with words in all different kinds of ways. Um, when I was little, I dreamed that I would be an author and I'd live in the countryside and have cats. Uh, I have two beautiful cats. Uh, this is Bobby. And say hello. Hello, says Bobby. <laughs> the best cat in the world. He's a, the flockiest bean buggy sort of a cat you can hope for. Uh, I also have a record who's a white fluffy one who's over that way. So I have written three books so far. Um, the first one is called Fish Boy. The second one is called The Boy Who Hit Play. And the third one is called Fire Girl Forest Boy. So first, let's talk about this one because um, it's the first one. So Fish Boy um, is about a boy uh, called Billy Sheen whose hero is Sir David Attenborough. Uh, so, <laughs> with a Sir David impression. Billy Shield is here on the front of Chloe Dakin's book and we see him talking to a talking mackerel. Uh, that's what happens to Billy, he goes swimming, he loves to swim and uh, he meets a talking mackerel. And um, it's a beautiful, poetic, quirky story. And the second one is uh, The Boy Who Hit Play. Uh, this is a story about a boy called Elvis Crampton Lucas who was found on a bench as a baby and age 13 he decides to set off to find out why. It's a crazy Scandinavian road trip journey of cinnamon buns, death avoidance and discovery. And the third one is Fire Girl Forest Boy. Um, this is an exciting, uh, really fast paced adventure set in the Peruvian rainforest. It's told between two different people. Um, Maya, who's from Glasgow, and Raul, who's from Peru. Um, in the beginning of the story, Maya is abandoned in the jungle by her father, and um, she has to discover why. And Raul, um, who's had to move from the jungle because of a horrible tragedy that happened, is going back to put something right that went so horribly wrong, no one thinks he can. And then their paths collide. Uh, Maya here discovers that she has a secret magical power when she taps into her inner fire because it also talks about really important environmental issues um, such as illegal logging in the Peruvian rainforest and the impact of that on the forest and the people. So I'm going to read you a little bit right at the start. If you catch the light right you can get the look on someone's face, the look that comes and goes in the bazillionth of a second. The one you had the day the letter came, the one that promised to change our lives forever. That's as much as I saw before you shut it and yourself away in the study. Except you came back out, and it never did. Ever. If I had a camera, click, I could have got it, that look. That and the one you had yesterday before they came. The people I trust as much as Green Mambas, no offence to the Mambas, and you disappeared. If I had a camera, I could have shown everyone what their faces look like at 5am this morning, when they walk into my room and tell me that you've gone that you've left me alone, lost in the land of the sun. And if I had a camera, I would show you what they look like right now, when I'm hanging out of a tree in the cloud forest of the sloth, and light balls falling out of the sky. Then we're going to fast forward a chunk here to a little bit of action for you. Um, yeah, because it's kind of like a mystery these guys are solving when they're running through the jungle. And um, part of it is they have to go into a hotel and find someone there. So they've run in and um, they've got this creature, which is called, uh, which is an agouti packer. And it looks like, can you see down the bottom there, that's the agouti packer. And in the book, its name is Stephen, because I thought that was fun. So you imagine Stephen, the agouti packer, is a bit like the size of a little dog, um, kind of running around um, in the middle of a town. A really wild, piratey town. And um, yeah, and then they're going into, this hotel and they, the duty packer comes in the hotel too. Stephen escapes. He runs. I run after Stephen. Raoul spills his soup and Stephen starts licking it up off the floor. The woman behind the desk screams and I scoop him under my arm and put him out the front door. Wait there, I say, and he gives me big eyes. The receptionist stands and yells at me. Sorry, I yell and run out. Raoul catches me in the corridor. 203, he says, and I look at the board of keys on the wall. Room 203. I see the keys, top row behind the receptionist who sits back down. I also clock a CCTV camera, trained on the desk and one on the lift. I wonder if they enjoyed the Stephen and me show. The keys are too high, plus they've got CCTV, I say. So, 
So it's impossible. Raoul wipes the soup off his shirt. He looks at the key rack. He looks back at me. You know, in my country, there are 2,937 species of birds and animals. 16% of them don't exist anywhere else in the world. 31% of the plants don't exist anywhere else either. If they cut down those trees, they will die. Hundreds of birds and monkeys and baby monkeys will just die. All right, all right. I put my hands over my ears. I can't bear it. I scream in frustration. And a ball of yellow pops out of the staircase and looks at us, then hovers into the reception. The receptionist's eyes bulge. I look on in horror as it spreads itself against the wall by the lifts and sets the wallpaper on fire. The fire alarms go off. So this is Raoul. The receptionist runs over with an extinguisher. Fire starts licking up the wallpaper. You can't do that, Maya tells the fireball off as it drifts back to us. You can't just go around doing things like that. She shouts at it and it shrinks to the size of a pea and disappears. She eyeballs me. You did that deliberately. You made me mad on purpose. It was an experiment, I smile. We stare at the fire, the fuss everyone's making about it. It pulls everyone in. Stephen keeps leaping at the window from outside like a kangaroo on Mountain Dew. I try not to laugh. Maya runs in and stands on the receptionist's chair and snatches the key. We put our hands over our ears and run for the staircase. Everybody else is running down. We run up. We reach the, uh, we reach the floor and speed walk along the corridor. I see the numbers 213, 209, 205. We swing through a double door and stand outside 203 as the door at the other end of the corridor slams shut and freeze. Okay, so that's a little bit of that. We're going to do a bit of imagining. This is kind of based on being down under the sea. And um, I thought it's the summer, that'd be a really nice thing to do, to imagine that we're down under the sea. Not all of us are going on holiday right now, so let's imagine we are um, travelling somewhere beautiful with a lovely big sea that we can swim in. Okay, so we're going to imagine that we're amazing at swimming, even if we're not. We're going to imagine that we are, the power of imagining. And we've gone deep out into the sea and it kind of looks like this, you know, when you can see the sun coming through the top and it all ripples on the sand on the bottom. Very beautiful. Um, we're going to come across a fish in the water and everybody pick one of these that you would like to meet in the sea. Which would you like to meet? Don't think too much about it, just pick a one um, that jumps out at you and think yes, this one is for me, that would be interesting. Um, if you meet the shark, not necessarily going to eat you and uh, we're going to make it into the shark you would want to meet or uh, yeah, you're going to invent it so it's fine. This is a ghost fish and it um, appears and disappears. Ooh, this looks very mysterious fish. This is the Dumbo octopus. I don't know. I think this one's a baby blowfish. Anyway, pick which one. All right, you're done. Good. And you're going to give it a name. Okay. Uh, maybe that's Frank or a very simple name or maybe it's a really descriptive name like the um, brain eating shark. Yes. Or the, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you'll be good at coming up with something. All right. While you're thinking, you can pause. Yes, and when you've got it written down, replay. We'll carry on. What does it like to eat? Now that could be something straightforward, like chicken tandoori. Yeah. This is the chicken tandoori octopus. What it likes, or marshmallows, or it could be something like other people's ideas or sunlight. Yeah. So be as creative as you would like. Give it a pause. Have a think. Write it down. Next thing, what's its favourite thing? Yeah, maybe it has a lucky rock. Nah, you know, maybe it has. What's the fish's favourite thing? Yeah, what could it eat? What would it really like? Maybe as a fish friend, that's its favourite thing. Yeah, maybe it's friends with one of these. I don't know. Um, be as wild and imaginative with this as you can. Maybe it likes playing marbles. I don't know. I hope it doesn't like. Playing switch, that would be a bit. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, maybe it does. Okay, so everybody's fish has a magical power. So I normally say, what kind of magical powers can you have? And um, things like being able to um, teleport, or um, mind read, or disappear, or um, yeah, it could be whatever you like. Produce confetti, um, super speed, yeah, can shrink or expand. 
I think it's something that you really like to have as well. Write that down. Okay, so you've got all these things written down. You've got an idea of what your fish is like. It's got all these powers. You've got a name for it. Yeah, you've got quite a lot down about this fish. Then you're going to turn over your piece of paper and write at the top, when I touch the fish. Okay, dot, dot, dot. This is the beginning of the sentence, right? So we're going to do automatic writing here, um, which is a really helpful way of writing that just releases ideas without you being too worried about what you're writing down. Sometimes I think, as a writer, when you're looking at a page, you can kind of go, wah, I could write anything. It's a bit hard. But if you start with a sentence and then you just put yourself on a timer for a couple of minutes, you can get loads down and it just frees you up, yeah, to really just enjoy writing some really interesting words. So, when I touch the fish, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So, when I say go, I want you to finish the sentence and to start your story. You're going to write as fast and as much as you can in two minutes. Okay, um, we're not worried about punctuation or spelling or anything like that. This is about creativity and ideas and fun and just really enjoying playing with words. Okay, are you ready? Let me just see if I'm ready, if I can get my time on. I don't know if I can. Yes, I can. Okay, right. Are you ready? Get your pencil on your piece of paper. It's like a race. It's like a writing race. Ready? Steady? Go. Okay. Right, 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 right. As fast as you can. It could be like, when I touch the fish, I'm transported into a different universe. Everybody's writing now. Everybody's writing for two minutes. And I have to sit here and go, hmm. And uh, imagine that I'm looking at you guys right in a way. Uh, and try not to distract you from writing. Because you'll be concentrating really hard. We don't want any sound coming from you at this time. We just want focus. Yeah. I always think it's an ICAM if you ever get stuck. Just imagine that you're in the middle of this really amazing film and um, you write what you see. And if you make it exciting for you, then it's really exciting for people to read. That's one minute gone, you've got one minute left. See how much you can do. Okay, three, two, one, stop! Everybody put your penny pencil down, hang on, stop! Uh, give your hand a bit of a shake, if you got a little bit crampy there. Um, so how did that go? Yeah? Maybe you've got the beginnings of something really unexpected there. Yes, thank you for taking part. And it's lovely to see you, and thank you for coming around my house. So keep reading whatever you're reading, find what you love, and enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye.